Hey everyone, today we will be talking about a type of a cataract called congenital cataract, right? Let's get straight into it, let's make this very quick. So congenital cataracts is cataracts present at birth, opacity of lens which is present at birth, right? And, do, and, and depending upon the location of where the cataracts can occur in the lens, it's divided in, into these few subtypes, right? Capsular, nuclear, cortical, lamellar, and total, right? We discussed capsular in the previous lecture. We did discuss nuclear cataract in the previous. We did discuss cortical as well. Total is easy to understand, right? For example, this is the lens and all of it, the whole thing, right? The whole thing is, is, is opaque, right? Uh, simple. And then there is this another one called lamellar, which we did not quite discuss. So lamellar basically means, what does the word lamella mean? Lamella actually means layer, right? So lamellar cataract is a kind of cataract where one or a few specific layers of the lens, they get opaque, right? In the previous lectures, we did discuss that uh, we have a nucleus here. And then we, okay, not, not that small, it's a little big, bigger than that. And then uh, see the structure of the lens is like, it is in the form of flares, right? Like an onion. Like, for example, you cut an onion in half and it looks somewhat like this, right? We have this one circle and this another circle and this another circle, right? These are layers, right? These are called lamellae. And, and I know, yeah, in, in, in the previous diagrams, I did the mistake of drawing it like a spiral, right? One continuous. It's actually more of uh, like, like, like this, right? So if, if, uh, if one of these layers were to, let's say, get, uh, opaque, right? That would be called a lamellar cataract, right? And lamellar cataract is actually one of the most common kinds of cataracts which can occur in, in babies and in, in infants, right? So let's do a quick recap. Capsular, when it, it, when it is with the, near the capsule, right? Capsular or subcapsular. Then we have the nuclear, which is the nucleus, right here. Then we have the cortical, which, which could be all over the place but not in layers, not specified to a single layer. Then we have lamellar, which could be which is almost similar to cortical, but it is in a definite layer, right? And then there is total, which is, of course, total, right? All of it is opaque for certain reasons. What could cause uh, congenital cataracts? Now, these, uh, this is very, very important to know, right? It's classified a little bit different now in our book, but this classification, I assure you, this is better. Uh, it's, it's more, it makes more sense. Right. So you see, uh, most of the time, the congenital cataract, it's hereditary, right? It's in the genes and it's usually an autosomal dominant disease, right? Although there can be cases of uh, congenital cataract being X-linked or being autosomal recessive as well, right? Then there is very, very important, very high yield rubella infection, right? I mean, if you're sitting in the exam, and you write uh, the causes of congenital cataracts and you like write radiation and forget rubella infection, they're not going to accept that from you, right? So there are these little uh, other things, right, right? But these five, at least, these are extremely important, extremely vital to know. Hereditary cause, most of it. Rubella infection, also a major share of uh, congenital cataract patients, right? Uh, then there is Down syndrome, people who have children who have suffered from Down syndrome, trisomy 21, when you have three 21 chromosomes, right? Usually there are two, of course. And then there's this disease called galactosemia, where you have galactose, galactosemia, galactose in your blood, right? Emia. It's a, it's a disease in which there's uh, the absence of a certain enzyme which cannot digest or break down galactose, right? And as a result, galactose are the byproducts of galactose. They get, they accumulate in, in, in certain places and they can, of course, accumulate in the lens as well. Then there is this another condition called aniridia, right? An means no. Iridia refers to the iris, right? So this is a condition in which the child does not have the iris, right? And it is a very complicated uh, developmental disease, but it can it can lead to cataracts, right? So hereditary cause, rubella infections can cause congenital cataracts. Down syndrome can cause congenital cataracts, galactosemia, and iridia. There are other minor things as well, right? 
Other minor things like, for example, corticosteroid usage by the mother, of course, could cause congenital cataracts. Radiation exposure during pregnancy could cause congenital cataracts. Trauma during delivery, right? There are certain instruments used during delivery which could cause a trauma. And we know from our previous lecture that trauma is a cause of cataracts, right? Go back and revise the previous lecture if you, if you, if you don't remember this. <laughs> and uh, then, of course, diabetic mother, right? That can also cause congenital cataracts, right? Uh, nothing so difficult about it. Just remember these five names. And, and in fact, I've, I've, uh, I'm, I just, uh, while I was recording this lecture, I just came up with a, with a silly little mnemonic. Uh, drag, D, R, A, G, drag, her. <laughs> kind of strange, right? Kind of silly. But uh, you can ima just just imagine that girl in your neighborhood who used to bully you, and then uh, <laughs> and then imagine you're dragging her, right? <laughs> He's a mnemonic, silly little mnemonic. In fact, mnemonics are supposed to be silly, right? Uh, because silly, stupid things. People remember stupid things, and we don't remember normal things. At least that's how my brain works. Uh, might not be the same for you. <laughs> so drag her. D. Down syndrome, R, rubella, A, aniridia, G, galactosemia, her for hereditary, right? Simple, easy, moving on. Uh, symptoms of congenital cataract, ah, same, simple, right? Decreased vision because you can't probably see. Lens opacity you can't really see. Decreased vision, nothing so difficult about it. Then here's a new word, leukochoria, right? You know the word leuco, right? Leuco means white. Leukochoria is a condition in which when you reflect, when you, when you shine a light on, on someone's eyes, the lens, which is white color, it reflects the light back, right? And as a result, you can see a white kind of eye. And it looks somewhat like that, right? See, this, 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 uh, child has leukochoria. See this white color over here, right? That is because, uh, there is a light being flashed upon his eyes. Now, leukochoria, is a very big symptom. It's a very big indicator of, of many, many diseases, right? There are a lot of diseases which can cause leukochoria, right? One of them is congenital cataract. We will not be discussing the others. You can check them out in your book. Uh, but the differential diagnosis of uh, leukochoria is very, very important. You really need to know what conditions can cause leukochoria because there are certain conditions like retinoblastomas right which are very very which could be very life-threatening right so if you uh, see leukochoria that should not be taken lightly right and very prompt diagnosis and testing should be done to ensure that the infant is safe so leukochoria right uh, and again you can check out those conditions in your book uh, i'm not going to write them here then there's uh, two more symptoms uh not there they, they could be there they could not be there right if a guy has a, if a child has a congenital, if a child has a congenital cataract, they might have a squint, right? They might have nystagmus, which is the movement of eyes to and fro, vibrating, right? Diagnosis and testing. How would you diagnose cataracts? Ah, very easy. Red reflex test. Don't, don't be confused by its name. It's simply just shining a light in a dark room on on someone's eyes, right? It's, it's very similar to that. And as a result, uh, if you do a red reflex test and you find, and you see leukochoria, that could hint at congenital cataracts. Then there is another procedure called retinoscopy. Remember, this is a totally different procedure from the, 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 the normal fundoscopy that we see in, in, in the hospitals, right? And we might encounter retinoscopy in the retina chapters, which we will be, of course, studying later. Uh, then, of course, as we, we, we saw that there are many conditions, for example, like rubella infection and, and, and like galactosemia and, and uh, Down syndrome, right? And I mean, you, and, and you could do tests for them as well. These are not specifically cataract tests, right? But they can give you a hint. They can give you an idea of why the cataract is occurring. For example, if someone has a positive torch test, right? That can kind of guide you towards cataracts. So systemic tests can also be carried out if there is any uh, suspected underlying condition, right? Uh, I think I'll be ending this video right now. And in the next, uh, the next lecture will deal with adult cataracts, right? And yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, like, subscribe and share. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one.